I'm Kajal Ruparel, occupational psychologist specialising in assessment and selection and leadership development. I'm a chair of the Science and Practice Strategy Group, which is part of the Division of Occupational Psychology. The objective of this group is to be the voice of our members, to promote the value that occupational psychologists bring to the world of work, and to publicise the latest research within our field. The vision is to bridge the gap between science and practice. What this means is to get practitioners and academics to talk to each other, to encourage further dialogue. A recent example of how we achieved this was an event that we staged on action learning sets. Um, so um, Paul here has kindly offered to, um, to lead on this and he'll be talking through some of the theories and principles behind action learning sets, why they, uh, why they work and then we'll go into the, uh, the practical session. To me an action learning set is about giving people space uh, to come together and consider a problem that hasn't got um, an easy solution to it. And to do that in a structured way, uh, a disciplined way, with their colleagues providing them with support and using a, a psychologist, for example, as a facilitator. Members were attracted to the event for a variety of reasons. To refresh their knowledge on action learning sets, to acquire some skills in facilitation, or just to learn more about it. Um, but what is action learning? Well, it, it is a powerful and practical approach uh, to fostering learning in, in the workplace. Um, evidentially, through, through the research about action learning, when they're well run, they can really have an impact uh, both for the individual and for the team and for the organisation. In an action learning set, we use Cobb's learning cycle. And the cycle itself uh, encourages people to take a whole journey through learning from uh, their experience through, through the set reflecting on their experience, giving it meaning, and then also through the action learning set making a plan and preparing some actions that they then can take out and experience. So that when they come into the next set, they bring that experience in and reflect on that, and so the cycle goes on. What we asked people to do on the night was to actually experience a, a mini action learning set. And we invited them first to go through that process of identifying a topic that uh, one individual in the group would share with everyone else, and, and asked another person to become a facilitator for that. Typically in the action learning set, the presented problem is not actually the real problem. So, for example, um, I had a manager in a set who raised the fact that he had a member of staff who was not uh, performing very effectively. And he was quite frustrated about this. The individual wasn't presenting their information on time. They weren't delivering on time. But as the set started to work with the manager and ask, well, what have you done? What, what things have you done to help the individual? there was a sort of realisation that the, the manager was the one who had the problem and who wasn't actually following effective uh, leadership methods to get the best out of their member of staff. For example, by coaching them, by getting alongside them, setting some time scales that were realistic uh, and really supporting their member of staff. And the rest of the set worked really hard to help that individual find their way through and find a better way of dealing with the individual. So they went out of the set with a set of actions and they came back in the next set saying, wow, it's fantastic. There's, there's been a real change in our relationship and the person is now delivering. Sometimes when a, when a set has really got to know each other well, um, there's a, a bond of trust forms between them and people start to reveal things that maybe they wouldn't have revealed uh, when they initially got together. For example, I had a member of a set who only that morning that we were running the action learning set uh, raised the fact that their manager had actually accused them of, of bullying in the workplace. And they were absolutely incensed by this because they couldn't believe that, that anybody would ever accuse them of that. 
They had no intention to, to be that way. And so what we did as a group was to facilitate the person talking about how they related to their staff and what, what they did with them. And as we'd gone into it, somebody in the group just had a question. And a lot of it had been about talking about the way they spoke to people. And he asked a very simple question, which is, what about the way you write to people? What about your emails to people? And it was at that point there was a sort of gee whiz moment for the individual as they, they started to say, oh, well, yes, some might describe my emails as a bit robust. And what do you mean by robust came back from the, the member of the set. And as he talked about it, he realized that the way he was presenting things in writing to people was very, very directive. And yes, he realized, oh, it could be seen as, as bullying. It was on the edge of uh, that. And maybe somebody who was a little more tender-hearted might have difficulty with that. And it was a very important moment for this individual and had a significant effect on the way that they, they started to manage from there on in. We invited Antonia Dietman, Chair of the Division of Occupational Psychology 2010-11, to share with the members how action learning sets are implemented within the Ministry of Defence. I actually got this email just, just before I came out tonight from one of my set members and I, and I asked them if I could share it and I think it just really clearly shows the fact that they brought an issue, they discussed it, they came to some actions and then what the value of those actions were. So this, this person, um, fairly senior, they have a 50 person team and they're trying to hold quarterly team, team briefings. Really struggling. Um, she's quite an informal person but she's tried lots of different layouts of this team meeting and really it was her on, on uh, transmit and giving lots of information she wasn't getting anything back. Um, and she usually is used to real interaction with her staff. So she was losing confidence in her ability to talk to a large group and to hold group meetings. And at the action learning set, she took away four actions. She wanted to seek, she said she was going to seek feedback from the wider team about what they liked about these meetings. She was also going to ask feedback informally, so when she happened to stop by someone's desk, she would ask for feedback. She was also going to look back at her past experiences and see what that had taught her. And finally, she was going to talk to three specific people. Um, and interestingly, some of them were from the action learning set. So I think we discussed earlier that some of the learning can continue outside the formal set. And she did do all of these actions. She, she lists the, what she did and who she spoke to and the feedback that she had. And actually, it wasn't as bad as you know she was fearing. She was getting positive feedback from people, but they actually were a little bit afraid that large gatherings automatically meant bad news, and she never thought that. Um, and so she can then uh, set the expectations, you know, we're just meeting about something normal. It's not, you know, we're all going to lose our jobs tomorrow. Um, at the end, and she just ends her email saying that speaking to other people reminded me um, of how confident that she had been in the past in team meetings and that she was grateful for all the feedback and thought-provoking conversations from the action learning set. Um, and she uh, says at the end of the two briefings that she's just conducted, she felt happier about how they went um, and she will utilise her experiences in the next team briefing, um, which she hopes will be much more relaxed and informal um, and that she's even um, bringing in a guest speaker and she thanks the set for their input. So I just thought it was a really beautiful illustration of the power of very simple questioning, really, and that's um, changed her behaviour. I believe it's important for psychologists to come to these uh, science and practice events because we, we need to get together and reflect on the way we operate as psychologists and how we best demonstrate to other people how we operate as psychologists. And so share and learn from each other the knowledge and skills necessary to, to do that. Paul was really interesting and informative and we got to run an action learning set as a small group. 
and I realised just how empowering action learning can be for individual managers because they get to solve a problem and for a group of managers as a whole because they actually learn how to support and develop each other. I would hope that people took away from the event uh, a deeper understanding of what action learning sets are about and equally uh, a deeper understanding of how psychologists can contribute to action learning. Future events include knowledge sharing sessions where we invite members to talk about topical issues that affect our profession. If you're interested in getting involved in any way, whether it be organising an event, facilitating one or coming up with ideas, then please contact the following, dopme at bps.org.uk.